Hi everybody, welcome to Thea and Olaf. My name is Irene, with me is Olaf, our Samoyed doggy. Hi doggy. And today we'll be talking about our recent trip to Oregon. As many of you know, we recently moved to the Seattle area, so we figured why not check out more of the Pacific Northwest. And our trip to Oregon turned out to be one of the most adventurous trips we've ever done as a family. And before I share you more details about our trip, I want to remind you that we do have a newsletter that we send out quarterly. So if you're interested about our lives, what Olaf is up to, what Theo, our kitty cat, is up to, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. We'll be sending out a summer update soon. You can subscribe via the link below. So on our trip to Oregon, we saw a few different towns. First, we stopped by Columbia Gorge or Hood River, which is about an hour east of Portland. Then we headed down toward Mount Hood. And then from there, we went even further south to Bend and then back up to Washington. The Columbia Gorge is really worth seeing. I would say it's quite gorgeous, pun intended. And within that gorge, there's the Columbia River that runs through it. And parallel to the river is a very scenic drive where you can see a ton of waterfalls, the most famous of which is Multnomah Falls. And you actually need a reservation to see Multnomah. And that's what we did. And even though we had a reservation, we were very surprised to see uh, so many people there. It was very hard to find parking and you need a shuttle to actually go to the entrance. Uh, so we decided to just forego that plan altogether and see a different waterfall instead, Joaquina Falls. And that turned out to be quite pleasant. It wasn't crowded. Olaf was able to uh, directly see that waterfall. He was a little bit skittish about the noise of the waterfall, but otherwise we really enjoyed that hike and it was quite pleasant. After seeing the waterfalls, we spent the night in the town of Hood River uh, at a lodge called Westcliff Lodge. And that place is really great because uh, it's right by the water, right by the river. So it's really scenic, it's very peaceful. And in addition, there's lots of grassy areas for your pup to run around and sniff everything. So Olaf thoroughly enjoyed that. I also found that their pet fee per night was pretty reasonable. It was just $10 a night. We did have a little mishap during our time in Hood River though. So the day we were headed out of town, we decided to get breakfast at the local diner. And as we were wrapping up, Eric actually felt something on his neck and lo and behold, it was a tick. Um, so he was freaking out, I was getting Lyme disease. So we stopped by the pharmacist for some advice. They told us to go to urgent care or to see a doctor. And we were able to see a doctor that day, luckily. And the doctor assured Eric that it uh, this tick didn't actually gorge on his blood, so uh, he was fine. The tick didn't latch on enough. Um, but that was just a great reminder for everyone, especially during spring and summertime, that it is tick season. So if you're going hiking, make sure that you are well covered, that you brush everything off, especially if you go to more woodsy areas or tall grassy areas. And especially with your pup, you want to make sure that they're up to date with their flea and tick medication. Uh, you can spray on tick spray to prevent bugs from getting on them. And with them too, be sure to brush them out. We make sure to brush all off plenty, especially after being outside. After Hood River, we decided to drive down south to see Mount Hood. And we decided to take a nice hike to see this mountain. Uh, we went on the trail called Mirror Lake and I read that it was a pretty easy hike, but when we actually got there, that hike was a lot harder than we expected. So the first part of the hike was actually really snowy. Um, there were some high snow blocks that we had to go through. Uh, there were plenty of switchbacks throughout the trail. And at the very end, when we, when we got to the lake, it was very hard to find the trail. We had to maneuver through shrubbery, uh, go through very narrow paths. But at the very end, we did reach the lake and it was very icy. Uh, Olaf had a great time in this lake. Uh, he dove in the icy areas, he was digging. <laughs> We also had a few mishaps during this hike as well. So poor Eric uh, touched dog poop at the beginning of this hike as he was maneuvering through some piles of snow. Luckily, I had some soap in my pack and he used it with some drinking water that Olaf had. Um, I also fell down at the end of the hike. I got scratched up because I was wearing shorts and Olaf had a few unfortunate face on encounters with other dogs. Um, they were growling, he was growling, uh, mostly because there were some head-to-head -head interactions on the trail and the trail was so tight. So that's something to be very cognizant about if you go on this hike, especially when it's busy. Um, you may want to pick up your dog to avoid these head-on encounters with other dogs. You may want to wait on the trail, especially if your dog is a little bit more reactive to other dogs. Along the drive to Mount Hood, you'll see plenty of farm stands that sell uh, local produce. So that's a great stop to make and support local farms. 
Um, so we made a stop to buy some apples and some pears. And a lot of these farm stands don't allow dogs inside. So we left Olaf outside in the car with the windows down. Um, there were some people that were calling Olaf, trying to get him to interact with their dogs. So Olaf was whining a bit and we were a little bit frustrated by that experience. So that's just something to be aware of if you do leave your dog out with the windows down, you gotta keep an eye on them. So after Mount Hood, we drove straight down to Ben and we got there pretty late at night. It wasn't until the morning that I discovered that there were plenty of foxtails around the property. And if you don't know, foxtails are these wheat-like uh, plants that are very spiky and they're very intricate with the thorns. And they're very toxic to dogs. They can pierce through their skin towards internal organs. They can really damage the paws. So you really don't want your pup walking through them or getting too close to them. So I was pretty disappointed by this Airbnb because they did have a huge acre field for dogs to play in, but we couldn't use it at all. And it was very difficult to even find a spot for Olaf to potty in. So being very cognizant of foxtails, they can be anywhere, not just in farm areas. Even in our town, there are plenty of foxtails. So keep an eye on them and make sure your dog doesn't go near them. One of the highlights of our trip to Ben was for Olaf to meet his distant cousin, Volki. And for those of you who don't know, we don't actually know any of Olaf's siblings. So for him to meet family, even if it is distant, was very special for us. So when Olaf and Vogi first met, they were very barky, which isn't too surprising. And we took him to a park for them to meet in a more neutral place. And once they started playing with each other, it was actually quite pleasant. Olaf wasn't too barky, but eventually it got into a bit of a scuffle and we actually had to break up their fight. Um, this isn't too surprising uh, since male teenage dogs can play a bit rough, especially with all these raging hormones. So it was a bit unfortunate, but at least they got a chance to meet. After the play date, we decided to take a stroll through downtown. We walked through Drake Park, which is a very big park in the heart of downtown. And Olaf loved sniffing everything there. He was a little bit poly at first, but eventually he calmed down and was able to pass through a few dogs. Afterward, we had lunch at Ben Brewing Company. It was very busy, especially since it was Memorial Day weekend, so it was very hard to find a table. Uh, but we did find a spot that was a little bit tight, but Olaf was able to settle under the table and just chill. There were actually a few people that uh, tried to pet him too without our permission, but Olaf was very great. He didn't bark, so we were very happy with how he behaved. The other highlight of our trip was to go down memory lane and see Blockbuster. It's like the only Blockbuster that's left and it's in Bend, Oregon. Um, and Olaf actually did really well inside the store. He was a little bit whiny in the beginning and these little girls were gushing at him going, oh my gosh, fluffy dog. So that set Olaf off a little bit, but luckily we found the AC vent and Olaf sat on top of it and was able to chill out a little bit. So we were able to enjoy our time there. Make it a Blockbuster night. After Ben, we decided to drive straight home to Washington. And because it was Memorial Day weekend, there's plenty of traffic. So we avoid the typical route of going through Portland, back up to the Seattle area. And instead we drove eastward uh, up towards Yakima and back to the Seattle area. And even with the detour to avoid traffic, it was still whopping 11 hours to get home. So it was a very tiring ride for everybody. And uh, we got home late around like 9 p.m. Um, Olaf was in the car for long stretches. He did get breaks for potty and for very, very quick walks. But for the most part, he was in the car. But he did really well. He didn't really whine. He napped for the most part. So we were pretty proud of his behavior. He was such a good boy. So that's it for a recap for our trip to Oregon. It was a very adventurous itinerary and we do recommend it. So if you're thinking of doing it, make sure you come prepared. Bring first aid kits for yourself and your pup. Make sure you bring good hiking shoes. Don't think that you can just wear your sneakers because uh, the terrain will probably be slippery and rocky. And lastly, be sure to bring any type of protection for the sun or for any bugs. You don't want to get bitten or burnt. So if you visited these parts of Oregon before, especially with your dog, I'd love to know what your experience was like. Let us know if you have any tips or recommendations. And as always, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching you need to make reservations. And that's what we did. We made a reservation for about three o'clock in the afternoon. And that actually wasn't too helpful for us. Sit. No, not by the camera. No, chal no challenging. Because the Columbia River runs through it. That river runs uh, at the border of Washington and Oregon State. And it's a really scenic drive that runs parallel to the river. Okay, he's blocking the camera. <laughs>